Optimus Prime, holder of the Matrix! Your destruction is at hand! For someone who is fearless, does not show any mercy, is enormously powerful and strangely bothered about the interests and well-being of its fellow Decepticons, Thunderwing surely comes under the category of an ideal Decepticon leader. If only that was the case, when you look at his obsession, it usually came at a price and mostly at regrettable costs. Now when we say obsession, we'd like to stress on his obsession towards finding the creation matrix for instance that literally consumed him. In fact, it is only fitting to address Thunderwing as the most powerful Decepticon that was ever created in the first place. After all, how else would you define someone who is impervious to regular weaponry and add to that the collective efforts of Autobot and Decepticons, which, mind you, were still not enough to take him down? You do realize what we're dealing with here? Well, then gear yourselves up for today's video where we will be exploring the origins of Thunderwing and delve deeper into his comic book appearances as well. You better be ready for this one. Before we go into an explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Thunderwing Backstory Explored for a better understanding of Thunderwing's backstory, we will be exploring the Marvel Comics continuity. Now, we all know about the Matrix of Leadership and how it has always been just a special few Transformers, mainly Autobots, who can wield the Matrix. However, in the case of Thunderwing, he believed that the ancient artifact of great power called him, and to top things further, he was also of the opinion that he would be the very first Decepticon to lay his hands on the sacred artifact. While digging deeper into the origins of Thunderwing, we learned that during the initial stage of the war, he was posted at the Decepticon military base Fort Psyche and soon became a protege of the mad Decepticon Megadeth. Of course, Megadeth had his own plans in store for Thunderwing and he majorly supported the fury desire of his protege going to the whole extent of personally training him as his A1 man. As for Thunderwing, he was aware of the fact that Megadeth was a complete lunatic, but he also knew that he would would be his ladder to the top, on the arrival of a group of Autobots more popularly known as the Magnificent Six, who were surreptitiously sent inside the Decepticon territory of Stanix with the sole purpose of creating disorder amongst the enemy. Thunderwing, under Megadeth's command, led an elite team and bombarded the town of Yus, where the Autobots were hiding. This led to the Magnificent Six getting captured and viciously tortured by the lunatic Megadeth, eventually leading to the death of one of the members. Stampede and later Megadeth along with the whole of Stanix getting nuked. Four million years passed by and there was this sudden void in the upper stratum of the Decepticon army. We are particularly stressing on the Decepticon High Command here. The vacuum worked in favor of Thunderwing as he was seen rising quite rapidly from an obscured level to that of a command position in the ranks. In fact, he even supervised an operation, one that enticed the ruthless battle patrol inside a Decepticon facility so as to capture the Autobots and steal Micromaster technology from them. Despite other Autobot patrol teams staging successful rescue operations, they were unsuccessful in preventing the Decepticons from creating their own Micromasters. After a span of 14 months, Thunderwing was tasked with a hunting mission to see if he was worthy enough to take over the leadership of the Decepticons that he had so badly craved for. As part of the mission, he was given the task of hunting down a trio of Autobot prisoners who were released on Earth and killed him. Thunderwing was able to incapacitate two of them, but could not capture the third one, Hosehead, who was rescued by his fellow Autobots. In fact, he also suffered a major injury from one of the Autobots that he had captured and literally died inside his very own impenetrable pretender shell. Curious that he was defeated, he went berserk. We are talking about him almost destroying a ship of his fellow Decepticon, Ruckus, who was sent to Thunderwing in order to let him know that his attempt for leadership was still being scrutinized and that he was being asked to come back to Cybertron. But Thunderwing was not the one to accept defeat so easily. In fact, he had Ruckus along with his team join him in his attack on the Ark in order to get his revenge on Horsehead. Thunderwing literally blasted his way into the Ark all by himself and went to the whole extent of confronting Optimus Prime on a one-to-one -one basis. It was only when Ruckus intervened in the situation that he came back to Cybertron. There he learned that he had actually made quite an impression on the governing body of the Decepticon Empire, or in other words, the Decepticon High Council with his plans as well as the extent of his retaliation. No points for guessing, that's how he earned the full leadership of the Decepticons. 
Thunderwing did a lot of things after he took over the leadership. To begin with, he got rid of neutral territories. We're talking about transforming Cybertron's most famous enterprise, Macadam's old oil house, into a Decepticon-only establishment. But in spite of everything he did, he couldn't do much when it came to the Autobot resistance movement, so he sent the Mayhem attack squad to take care of the Autobots. With Mayhem failing to do anything, Thunderwing took matters into his own hand and captured a team of Autobots on the planet. PZ Zaz. Next, he got them through torture sessions using his machine to mind leech on them. That's when he got to know that the Autobots were searching the universe for the lost creation Matrix. Thunderwing's own deadly fixation on the Matrix stirred quite a ruckus. Post-discovering traces of the Matrix energy in the sea monster, Clud, on the planet he called, Thunderwing mind-linked himself with a Clud and detected the location of the artifact, VSQS, the third moon of the planet Cameron. Thunderwing arrived on BSQS, but then the Matrix had become warped. Did that stop Thunderwing from fighting an intense battle with Bumblebee, Grimlock, and Jazz on BSQS? The answer is a big no. In fact, he almost overpowered the trio and would have successfully overthrown them had this predatory alien critter Matrix spawn, one that was both revived and warped by the Matrix, not intervened. This gave the Autobots just enough time to reach their ship. However, Thunderwing was fast enough to overtake them, grab not only the Matrix from them, but also take control of their shuttle. So when the Autobots left their shuttlecraft board the Ark, Thunderwing was already possessed by the Matrix and swathed in its energies. With Thunderwing brutally trashing Optimus Prime on board the Ark, hordes of Autobots went up against Thunderwing, but they met devastating ends. By then, the Matrix had completely taken over Thunderwing, his thoughts as well as his actions. There came a moment when he literally turned against his own forces. It's only fitting to say that the Matrix to consume him. Seeing no other choice left, it was the trio of Hosehead, Siren, and Nightbeat who opened the bay doors and harpooned Thunderwing to the Autobot shuttle, which self-destructed, ejecting Thunderwing and the Matrix out into space. But if you thought that was the end of the Matrix or Thunderwing for the matter, we suggest you think again. There is a reason it is known as the Creation Matrix, and that is because of the elements the artifact is made of. It only took the Matrix a bare minimum time to reactivate itself along with the body of Thunderwing as well as the Autobot shuttle on the surface of a planet. With time, Thunderwing's body was entirely healed and he was also capable of transforming to his alternate mode and he did so to get away from there. Powered by retribution and fully controlled by the Matrix, he arrived on Cybertron. It was precisely around the same time when Unicron had attacked Cybertron. What ensued was an intense battle between the duo, but of course, when it comes to Unicron, nobody really stands a chance. In short, Thunderwing's body was literally torn apart, and all that remained were tattered pieces of his body. Thunderwing was a Decepticon scientist. Looking back at the events of the 2005 IDW continuity, Thunderwing began as a simple Decepticon scientist who seemed rather concerned about the ongoing battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons. Of course, he had forewarned both the science about the damage that their war was causing to the planet and the consequential danger of an approaching catastrophic event which would make Cybertron impossible to inhabit, but his warnings were paid no heed. That is when he decided to take matters up in his own hand. And ended up creating a new skin which would aid him in surviving. We'd like to stress on the fact that he made himself undergo polydermal grafting, which is basically grafting living tissue to his own body in order to create an armored symbiotic carapace, and made him survive the impending apocalypse. While there's no denying that the grafting process literally drove Thunderwing crazy, but it also resulted in him becoming almost invincible. Mind you, not even the merged forces of the Autobots and Decepticons could stop him. Eventually, Thunderwing was entirely swallowed by Cybertron, which resulted and the whole planet becoming lifeless. Of course, things did not end here. Post an indefinite period of time, Thunderwing's resting place was not only discovered, but he was also resurrected. He, in due course, made his way back towards Cybertron, where he was savagely beaten by the Special Task Force Wreckers, the powerful Predacons and the reprogrammed Centurion Droids and Optimus Prime. But even with Thunderwing disclosing that he had a third Ultra Robot configuration, 
him, the combined forces were able to stop him, and his inert form was taken into custody by the Autobots. Now, if we look at the 2019 IDW continuity, Thunderwing was a notable fleet commander, one who was literally in the limelight during the prosperous Age of Expansion. But after the Age of Expansion came to an end, Thunderwing was allocated to a faraway asteroid colony known as Hexagon. While he served there as an administrator, Thunderwing kept waiting for the day when he would rise to his prior status again. Naturally, when he heard of the rise of the Decepticon movement on Cybertron, Thunderwing started to employ a horde of rebels, troublemakers, as well as mercenaries, all under the guise of expanding security for Hexacon. And that's not all. He even allowed the Amoral, ruthless scientist Arachnid to continue with her unholy experiments in generating synthetic versions of the artifacts of the Primes. When the ancient and the supremely powerful Vigilim made his way to the asteroid colony of Hexagon, Thunderwing saw that as an opportunity to get on the good side of the new Decepticon regime. He not only welcomed Vigilim, but also repaired him. Very soon, the Technobots arrived at Hexagon and started looking for Vigilim in order to take him into custody. Thunderwing, as a part of his plan, pretended that he knew nothing in relation to whatever was happening on Cybertron. But the Technobots are not the ones to be taken lightly, they realized something wasn't right and it ensued in a battle. Of course, Thunderwing wanted to get rid of the Technobots, but the hot-headed Autobots became a victim of the Arachnids' attempt at creating a synthetic enigma of combination. The Technobots emerged as Computron and the Autobot ally Titan eventually destroyed Vigilim, Lodestar thereby resulting in Thunderwing's future plans getting completely thwarted. Prime, holder of the Matrix! Your destruction is at hand! Thunderwing in Transformers Prime The Game Here, Thunderwing happens to be a creation of Unicron. His task was to serve Unicron as well as destroy the Matrix of Leadership. Later at some point, he was confined in a meteor which was packed with Dark Energon and fell into a deep slumber. It was Megatron who discovered the meteor and tried to bring it to Earth. However, the Autobots, upon detecting the signal, attempted to prevent him from doing so. It was in the ensuing battle that the meteor sliced up and Thunderwing was reawakened, only to find Optimus Prime, the very holder of the Matrix of Leadership, right in front of him. Thunderwing was sealed in Dark Energon to such an extent that he could just move his right arm. The duo was interrupted by the warship Nemesis, and Thunderwing made his way towards the ship in order to attack it. He was ultimately coerced into a state of stasis and then taken on board the ship. While on board, it was Knockout who brought around Thunderwing and Megatron told Thunderwing that he would repair him on the condition that he pledged his loyalty towards him. Like it or not, Thunderwing grudgingly agreed to do so, but after the Decepticons were done repairing him, Thunderwing attacked Megatron and escaped from the warship. It was Ratchet who finally built a device that was capable of draining Thunderwing's energy and stop him from revitalizing himself, but the machine had to be blasted from within Thunderwing. The problem was that none of the Autobots were that small in size so as to be able to fit inside the only known gap in Thunderwing. So it was ultimately Jack Darby who came forward to act on it and was successful in placing and activating the weapon on Thunderwing's chest. After Thunderwing was incapacitated, Optimus Prime was able to destroy the reactors within the former's shoulders, but Thunderwing was just not ready to accept defeat. He was hell-bent on destroying the Matrix. Seeing no other option left, Optimus Prime charged his weapons, resorting to the Matrix and putting an end to Thunderwing, who fell into a volcanic pit and brought about a volcanic explosion of Dark Energon evolution of Thunderwing toys. As part of the Transformers collection, Thunderwing came with a pretender shell and to his two heat-seeking laser blasters and his signature Cyclone Cannon. The release of Generations Deluxe class toys saw Thunderwing's alternate mode as a fighter jet, one that was loosely based on an F-22 Raptor boasting different wings, but having that characteristic zigzag pattern on the hull. This version has two missile launchers, two missiles and a recon drone. Speaking of the United release of Thunderwing, the toy also came with two missile launchers, two missiles and a recon drone, but the emphasis here is on the color. Lastly, as part of the Titan's return toy line, Thunderwing happens to be a reshaped version of the rebellious foul-mouthed Fangry. It has a new die-cast metal head mode face as well as a torso, which will remind you of Rodimus Prime.
Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. Do hit us with your thoughts in the comment section and let us know what you like the most about Thunderwing. Also, stay tuned with us for more exciting content. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Consider this a show of gratitude.